In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make post requests to send data to a server uh, in Ionic 2. Uh, so I've done a tutorial in the past on using the HTTP service uh, that Angular provides to make a GET request. Now, a GET request is going to allow you to uh, fetch some data from a server, uh, but a post request allows you to send your own data in that request so that you could then do something with that on the server. Uh, so you may want to uh, add a post or a comment to something perhaps. Uh, so you need to send that comment along with the post request. Uh, then you need to handle that on the server. It needs to be added to the database or something like that. And then you also get some kind of response back usually. Uh, sometimes you might not be uh, trying to add something to a database. You might just be making a request for data similar to a get, uh, but that request might involve uh, supplying some kind of data uh, in the request. So uh, perhaps if you're uh, searching for a location or something like that, uh, you might need to supply an address in a post request and then receive some data back with an answer. So it's slightly more complicated to send a post request, but it's it's more or less the same thing. So I'm going to walk through uh, how to do that. Now there's some uh, other tutorials I've done which may help you uh, understand this one. Uh, I definitely recommend checking out the a get request tutorial if you haven't already. Uh, that explains more of the basics of the HTTP service. Uh, I also have another tutorial that explains observables which uh, the HTTP service returns. Uh, so having a basic understanding of how observables work uh, will also be helpful. And you don't need to look at this tutorial. I have some tutorials on creating uh, node servers, basic node servers to uh, create some kind of backend for your application as I'll be using a node server as a backend in this example. Uh, you don't necessarily have to understand what's going on there. I'm just using it for the sake of having something to send a request to. Uh, if you want to have your backend in uh, PHP, MySQL, uh, Ruby on Rails, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the idea is that we're just posting data to some URL, which is going to hit a server and something's going to happen. So I have a, a project set up here where I have the client and the server. Uh, the client is the Ionic 2 application and the server is the node um, backend that I was just talking about. So I'll just quickly show you what's going on here. This is just a super simple server. Uh, I've just set up a single route that we can hit, uh, which is forward slash API forward slash test. So I'll be able to hit that URL in the post request uh, on localhost and this will um, uh, this will handle that request. Uh, so all this does is uh, I can send this um, I can send this route some data. It's not going to do anything with it uh, besides logging out the the body here. Uh, but then all I do is just create this response and send it back in JSON format uh, so that our application can pull that data back in. So before we will be able to use it, I'll just need to start that uh, server up. So I can just start that with node. Uh, server.js okay so we see that's so listening on port 8080 now uh, so we'll be able to hit that uh, in our post request so let's jump over into the ionic application now uh, so i already have a request set up on the home page here which is triggers uh, in the uh, ion view did load my lifecycle hook and so what we're doing is we're just trying to send this message here do you hear me to that uh, route so the url there is just on localhost uh, forward slash API forward slash test uh, but in I guess in a real world example uh, if you weren't developing on a local server you would just replace this URL with it uh, with whatever the URL of your actual server is so this is pretty similar to a normal uh, sort of get request with the main difference that we have a body that we're sending through here and so we're sending that in JSON format so we just create a, the body object here and we stringify it to send it along and then we also have a, a headers a parameter and so to use that we just import headers from the angular http library and then we can set whatever headers we need on that request uh, so the only header we're setting here is content type we're setting that to uh, json uh, but there's you can just continue to append as many headers as you need to satisfy whatever request you're making uh, but aside from that, uh, it's exactly the same as a GET request. We just uh, launch the request, that will return us an observable. We're mapping the response and we're subscribing to it. So I'm going to save this now and if we jump into the browser, we'll see uh, if it's working. 
Okay, so we can see that it's working there. Uh, it says uh, loud and clear, which is the response that we set up on the server, uh, which you can see just here. And if we reload this again and just keep an eye on the network tab here, you'll be able to see it uh, making a request uh, to grab that data. Uh, so if you look down the bottom here, you can see uh, it's hitting test. Uh, if we open that up, we can see the response there. Uh, we can even open up the headers and take a look at um, what's in there. And you can see we've got the content type that we set. Uh, so this network, uh, this request is going through as we'd expect it to. And then we can do whatever we need to do with whatever response we get, which in this case is just some text, so there's not much to do, uh, but you could send through any kind of response you wanted from the server. So that's, that's basically all there is to uh, sending a post request, but there is one very important difference uh, uh, when comparing it to, say, the get request. Uh, since we are relying on observables, and this is something I touched on uh, in the observable video, is uh, observables are uh, lazy, which means that they won't execute until they are subscribed to. And now this isn't a problem with, uh, say, the get request, because if you're making a get request, chances are you want to get some data. So of course you're going to subscribe to the observable to get that data. Uh, with a post request, maybe you're not interested in what uh, the... Uh, the result of that is what the response is. Uh, if you're just posting a comment, it's probably a good idea to listen for the response and check that everything was fine. But theoretically, you could just send a post request and let it fly off into the ether and uh, just hope that it gets added to the database and you don't really care about a response. But the problem with that is that if you don't subscribe to that response, then your post request will never execute in the first place. So if I were to just say comment out this uh, subscribe section here and we'll try to run this again uh, you can see that we no longer get that message there and if we open up the uh, uh, the console here we can see when the post requests are made if I just refresh this uh, you'll see that nothing ever hits the server here uh, but then if we uncomment that and we try again you'll see a a request go through to the server and you just saw them go through then and if we go back into the browser we can see that we have the loud and clear message back so when you are creating observables like this when you're making a post request make sure to subscribe to it uh, otherwise it's never going to execute okay so i hope you enjoyed this quick video tutorial and i'll see you in the next one